that's not going to happen this time around. Five o'clock is when we find out. And not one but two stories about big lottery wins that were kept secret. In London, a court battle begins today with a former wife of a $30 million winner looking for her share. And a Pickering couple collected their winnings yesterday but for weeks told no one, not even their kids. We'll have more at 7.30. Well, last night, if you were inside Rico Coliseum, you saw the stylings of rap megastar 50 Cent. And if you were outside, you would have seen the dozens of police officers assigned to patrol the concert. Police Chief Bill Blair dispatched the Guns and Gangs Task Force to make sure the show went off without any problems. Ever since 50 Cent announced he would be performing in Canada, objectors such as Liberal MP Dan McTagg have expressed concern that the rapper promotes a violent lifestyle. For their two cents and the controversial 50 Cent, we have two guests in studio. Wells Davis is the co-owner of Soul Clap Records, an urban music label. Wells, good morning. Good morning. You were not at the concert last night. You said you were afraid you'd be mistaken as a chaperone or a parent, <laughs> God forbid, if you'd been there. Exactly. But I'm familiar with his music, so... Chucky Noyan is a Toronto-based hip-hop artist who did attend the show last night. Chucky, good morning. Good morning, and uh, from JennyFinch.com, JennyFinch.com rapper, just to clarify that. Thank you very much. Okay. How was the mood of the show last night? Did the Guns and Gangs Task Force dampen it at all? Well, uh, I, I expected more hype, you know what I mean? Like, you know, all, all the police presence and whatever, you'd, you'd expect something to go down, you know what I mean? Almost, but nothing went down. Uh, the... At the beginning, when you came in, it kind of killed killed the mood. But once you got past all the security and the metal detectors and the wands, you know, it was good. Did it seem reasonable, given the time last, given the fact that last time Fifty Cent was here, someone was killed? Did it seem reasonable to you that all this firepower would have been brought in to keep things? Well, I understand all the security and you know, but the guns and gangs task force. You know what I mean? I I think that's a little a little too much. What's your take on the association between 50 Cent, violence, gun use, thuggish lifestyle? Well, music, uh, music, he's just making music, right? He's just telling a story that he's lived, you know what I mean? There's been tons of musical artists that come out in the past that have told their own stories, their versions of whatever, you know? Back in whenever, we used to have rock and roll, you know? And people used to point the finger, blame, you know, rock is the music of the devil mm -hmm. and whatever. And now I guess hip hop, you know, people are just blaming on hip hop. Good point. I remember Wells in uh, in Montreal when I was there. People were still talking in the early '70s about Cardinal Leger keeping Elvis Presley out of Montreal. He would not be singing in my city, said the Cardinal. Is there a difference, though? I mean, Elvis was a religious boy, lived a pretty clean life. This is a guy, Fifty Cent. He's been shot what eight times? Yeah, eight or nine, whatever they say. All right. So your take on this then? Um, I mean, I think it's it's ridiculous in the sense that art is art. I mean, Stephen King will write books about vicious, bloody murders and rapists and monsters. And Arnold Schwarzenegger will star in movies where 200 people get shot in the first 20 minutes. And yet nobody really makes a fuss about that. But I think I think it's thinly veiled racism or prejudice because it's a young black man who's pretty powerful. He's the number one selling artist in the world. And he's kind of invaded the minds and hearts of suburban Canada and America. And I think there's a little bit of that. Uh, that that's really at the core of the whole issue, I think. Do you think, too, I have to ask you this as an advertising executive as well as someone who owns a record label, he cultivates it. Oh. I mean, a, a, you know, whether it's Elvis or even the Beatles with their long hair, every musician wants to cultivate an outlaw image in order to represent the interests of the generation trying to separate itself from their parents, yes. no? Yeah, I mean, in advertising, we know the rebel sells, sex sells, and, and even violent sells. I think... Um, what 50 Cent is more a master of his brand image because the reality is popular songs are really about dancing or buying lots of big expensive things or or dancing in the club like none of his violent so-called violent songs actually have ever even made the top 10 so he's more popular with with young girls than he is actually with people who like gangster rappers so. and he's more popular with white suburban kids yeah. than he is with inner city black kids yeah yes. I was just gonna say that you know, that they said that, you know, it's a young black male problem that he's, uh, you know, exploiting violence or whatever. But at the concert, it was most like, mostly, you know, suburban white kids, not to, 
No, no offense. And decode that attraction to me. You know, George Carlin used to riff about how white kids would say, hey, how you doing, man? What's what's doing? Black kids never tried to sound like white kids. <laughs> Are the, the white kids want to be black kids? What, what's this about, Wells? Well, I think it's a little bit of the whole forbidden fruit syndrome. It's because, you know, whether they're told overtly by their parents or they're given cues from media or socialization that there's something so-called bad with these guys you know p- kids like to do what they're not supposed to do and i think a lot of the attraction is because they're told they're n- they shouldn't be there or they shouldn't listen to that or they sh- shouldn't date guys like that makes them want to try it yeah. mm-hmm. so. when you say you think it's a kind of uh, concealed racism let's go to the substance of this guy's life and i remember reading a playboy interview with him went into great detail about the violence in his life he dealt drugs made it clear he wouldn't be surprised if the last thing he heard in his life was a gunshot i mean this is this guy has been a bad bad dude so if we are worried about him we're not worried about him because we're black we're worried about him because what he actually has done is that fair um, I think he has had a, a shady crowd, uh, past, but I think a lot of it, he's like I said, he's manufacturing his image. He does not let any interview go by without him reminding everybody how many times he's been shot, yep. what he's done in the past. He's and he def- wears it like a badge of honor. Yes, he does. He's definitely a reformed so-called thug, for sure. Now he's a businessman. He has shoe companies. He's got movies. He's got albums. He wouldn't even have time to be a thug now. He's too busy. So. Chucky, what is, if I had to ask you in a paragraph, what his appeal is to you, both as a persona and as a performer, what would it be? What's his appeal? Yeah. Um, I guess his appeal is he's talking about a life that I guess a lot of people could can relate to, you know what I mean? Even though it's not it's not a... And how would you define that life for someone from Mars? Let's put the violent stuff yeah. aside, because as Wells has told it's us, most of his most popular... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How it's, just, it's just basically someone that's living through the struggle. It can be anything, but yet you still have the determination... And, you know, then hope to, to strive for success, you know what I mean? And he's basically saying that, you know, I came from the bottom and look at me now, you know what I mean? Despite all the, the negative criticism and the negative lifestyles that, he, you know, that he's had. Going back again, I could even mention Frank Sinatra, whose effect on Bobby Sockers, Soxers was widely deplored in the media, and then Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis and, and, and the Beatles and the Stones. Do you think we're ever going to see a disconnecting take place between so-called gateway behavior and the effect of music on youth, or is this just perennially part of the picture? Well, I I think that youth are always attracted, like I said before, to what's supposed to be taboo. Mm -hmm. And But as far as I think music affecting someone to the point where they are going to do a criminal vicious act, that would take a really instable mind of of that so-called youth. and that youth would need a lot more help than not listening to 50 Cent album. They need a lot. There's a lot more going wrong with them than just listening to the music. So, As you, as an advertising executive, early in his career, before he began to clean up his act, come to you and wanted to be a client, would you have had, as a black man, any concerns whatsoever about representing him to the public, of selling that image, selling that thug image? Would you, would you be reluctant to? Well, not any more than I would to market a... Uh, like I said, uh, a Schwarzenegger movie or a Stallone movie. Okay. To me, it's art, and it's not that serious. So. Okay. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Wells Davis, co-owner of Soul Clap Records, an urban music label. Chucky Noyan is Toronto MC, who attended the 50 Cent uh, show last night at the Rico Coliseum. Any of the rest of you who were in the audience, or for reasons you'd like to describe to us why you were not, our box box number 416-205-5807. Jim Curran. On the Gardner Expressway, the eastbound lanes of the Gardner still a delay as you come in through to the Humber. Approaching the Humber, several vehicles now lined up on uh, the left uh, shoulder. We did have a transport in the center lane. It has been moved. So we have uh, all lanes open, but uh, on the left shoulder, very close to the left lane. And you did good, man. Gentlemen, sit down this corridor and the elevators are on your left. All right, boss. Thank you. Take care. Steal the newspaper. Why not? Caught him. <laughs>